I want to uh, ask Butch and Sonny if you will put to rest what uh, reporters still keep asking me about how you're stranded, uh, that they're concerned that you don't have any clothes. Um, Yeah, eventually we want to go home. No, it doesn't feel like we're a castaway. So as of now, in January 2025, there are 10 humans in space, including Butch and Sonny, who launched and made it to the ISS in June of last year. Yes, of course, the famous mission that they were only supposed to be there for eight days. Now it's looking more like nine months with their scheduled return in March of this year instead of February. But we have proof of life once again. I've been wanting to hear from Butch and Sonny for a while now. We haven't heard from them. And so I listened to this interview that NASA conducted with Administrator Bill Nelson, outgoing administrator, I should say, and Pam Melroy. Of course, Jared Isaacman will be transitioning as the head of NASA. But this was Bill and Pam asking the four astronauts, how's it going? And them showing us this cool trick. And so while Butch and Sonny's time in space is coming to a close, they do have some pretty exciting things on the docket. Apparently, they are preparing for some spacewalks with first Nick and Sonny going out next week. So Nick and Sonny will be venturing out of the space station on January 16th to complete upgrades. And if that goes well... The next spacewalk will be Butch and Sonny on January 23rd. And so honestly, this wasn't a very long press conference, and I feel like we didn't learn much that was new. It's nice to know that they have these spacewalks planned. That's pretty exciting. And Butch and Sonny seem to be in really good spirits. Bill Nelson did ask this question, which I thought that he was going to ask about the rumors swirling about Sonny's health, but he basically said that, You know, will they set the record straight on the fact that people are calling them stranded? Um, You know, are they having clean clothes? And I almost think he should have just left that, will you tell us whether you think you're stranded or not, open-ended, because they seem to only address the clothes part of it and then moved on. Uh, I want to uh, ask Butch and Sonny if, if you will put to rest what uh, reporters still keep asking me about how you're stranded, uh, that they're concerned that you don't have any clothes, that you don't have any food. Would you put to rest for the final time, and I hope you never have to answer it again, just uh, how you all are doing? Yeah, I think when we first launched, I think it was well known that we came up here. We swapped out a couple of components we needed on Space Station for some of our clothes. So we wore some clothes for a a while, but that doesn't bother us because, you know, clothes fit loosely up here. It's not like uh, on Earth where you sweat and it gets bad. I mean, they fit loosely, so you can wear things, honestly, for weeks at a time, and it doesn't bother you at all. So we never had any issue with wearing clothes for an extended amount of time. Now we have plenty of clothes. Uh, We are well fed. I've never seen anyone ever ever eat as much as Don Pettit can eat. It is amazing to watch this man eat, as skinny as he is. So that's just been enjo- a joy within itself. Every meal time. Actually, I get up at morning. I get up early. Don gets up early. We get up like four. And uh, he's already in there eating before I even get up. I mean, it's just amazing. Amazing. So what you're telling us is you're not channeling Castaway, and you don't have a volleyball with a handprint on it that you call Wilson. No, we've we've got a whole team up here, so we we're not worried about that. And there's a lot to do as, as well with the team on the ground. You know, we have, you know, tons of we had tons of science experiments with SpaceX 31. We got spacewalks coming up. It was really busy when we were, uh, you know, waiting for Nick to get up here. And uh, it's it's just been a joy to be working up here, particularly with our our counterparts on the other end of the space station. It's just a uh, it's just a, a great team. And no, it doesn't feel like we're a castaway. Um, yeah, eventually we want to go home because uh, you know, we left our families a little while ago, but, uh, but we have a lot to do while we're up here. We've got to get all that stuff done before we go home. But listen, I still see a lot of debate and argument about how we should term what's going on with Butch and Sonny. And I think that maybe they're not stranded, but 
they are more or less stuck. Yes, there's contingencies in place. If there was an emergency, they would be able to get off space station. But in the meantime, they're not able to leave just because they want to leave. And I would pretty much call that stuck. But again, they are keeping really good high spirits. And you know what? That's what professional astronauts do. And these two are extremely professional. So the other sort of announcement that you may be interested in, Bill Nelson did talk a little bit about the Mars sample return, which we found out that NASA is deferring the decision on what to do to the Trump administration. So to give you context, for the last almost four years, NASA's Perseverance rover has been roving along a patch of land on Mars, and it's been collecting rock samples inside titanium tubes. So, of course, those tubes and the rock samples might contain clues about past life on Mars, but we're still trying to figure out how to get those tubes back to Earth. Of course, bringing Butch and Sonny back to Earth has been its own saga, but this Mars sample return has also been an ever-changing saga as well. So we also heard from NASA today the two options for retrieving and returning the samples gathered by the rover. So NASA has two ways that they might conduct these Mars sample returns, and they were presented during the press conference. One alternative involves a conventional architecture reminiscent of past NASA Mars missions, relying on a sky crane landing system demonstrated on the agency's two most recent Mars rovers. The other option, plan B, would be to outsource the lander to the space industry. The sky crane, about to conduct the sky crane maneuver. Sky crane maneuver has started, about 20 meters off the surface. We're getting signals from MRO. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. But Bill Nelson is leaving this decision on the table for the next NASA administrator, Jared Isaacman, working under the incoming Trump administration. So as Eric Berger writes in Ars Technica, the question now is, will they? And if the Trump administration moves forward with Mars sample return, what will it look like? Could it involve a human mission to Mars instead of a series of robotic spacecraft? I think that that is a stretch. But Eric points out the Trump White House is expected to emphasize results and speed with NASA's space programs with the goal of accelerating a crew landing on the moon and sending people to explore Mars. And so in order for this video not to get too long, I will link the article uh, Eric wrote about this because he goes into a lot of the background onto why getting these uh, sample rocks returned is so difficult, expensive. Um, there's, of course, budgetary constraints. There's schedule constraints. And so that was another thing that Bill Nelson brought up when talking to the astronauts. Now... I also should mention that I am planning on heading down to South Texas for the Starship launch on Sunday because the launch is now expected to be no earlier than Monday. Of course, this has been uh, due to weather issues, um, and hopefully it stays on Monday. Unfortunately, this will you know, make it impossible for some people to see the launch uh, that was originally scheduled to be this Friday. But I'm just officially stating, hey, uh, we will not see the launch until Monday. The seventh flight test of Starship is preparing to launch as soon as January 13th, which if we remember, the 13th of October was actually when we had flight five with the booster catch. So maybe the 13th is actually a lucky number and not a suspicious number. So I certainly plan to be down there and um, giving you amazing coverage. I have some surprises planned and uh, I was hoping to interview Nolan Arbaugh, the first Neuralink patient who was planning on going there. But because of the schedule change, unfortunately, he can't go anymore. Tim Dodd also is not going to be there in person. Everyday astronaut, if you don't know his first and last name. Um, and so he's going to be in California uh, covering a launch from Vandenberg with Mark Rober. So 
sometimes it's it's so difficult to plan things, especially when the schedule changes, but I will definitely be there. We also have the debut of New Glenn, uh, Blue Origins, Next Generation Rocket, which has slipped several times. It's supposed to be this Friday, but we'll, we'll see how that pans out. I'm not going to be in Florida because I'm choosing to go to Starship, um, but I will try to cover that launch live from my office in Austin. And hopefully you guys can join me. But I just wanted to give you this little update. I hope that you're having a great uh, start of the new year. And um, I think that there's some really exciting stuff happening in space. Of course, there's some devastating California fires going on right now, which apparently is also affecting uh, JPL. Speaking of the Mars sample return, JPL is apparently closed right now except for emergency personnel no fire damage so far as of Tuesday some wind damage but the fires are getting very close to the lab hundreds of JPLers have been evacuated from their homes many have lost homes uh, what's going on in California right now is absolutely just devastating and depressing I grew up in Manhattan Beach and so seeing this not too far from where I grew up I I feel so terrible for everyone there and um and I really hope that they contain that fire soon and that you know people get the help that they need and so while I want to be optimistic about the new year and the exciting things we have going on in space I feel like I'm you know not addressing something very important if I don't bring that up and so if you're affected by the fires in California I'm so sorry for you and so sorry that you know this is happening not a great start for so many in California in 2025 in fact Bill Nelson asked the astronauts if they had been able to see the fire yet from space and they said not yet so they haven't been able to see the fires in California yet they have observed fires in the Congo region. Apparently this is due to the annual slash and burn effort that they do for their agriculture. So this is a planned thing, but they will be trying to observe what's going on in Southern California and sharing all that information and visuals with everyone on the ground. And as soon as we get either day pass or night pass over Southern California, we're going to be using uh, the photo equipment that I talked about earlier to uh, record that and, and share it with everybody on Earth. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I know it was kind of a mishmash of different news and events, but that's really what my channel is about, keeping you up to date on what's going on in the space world. So thank you so much for joining. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe to Ellie in Space, and I'll see you in the next video.